we talk all the time about how um, there's a certain portion of the population that's way more at risk than the, the rest. Um, people who are compromised, people who smoke, people who are of older age, um, people who have neurologic disorders or conditions. Um, can you talk about the increased risk for patients with a neurologic disorder? And are there any populations of particular concern? Uh, at this point, we're still looking through our data to see if people with underlying neuro issues are, are more predisposed than others. Um, we're particular, we have a group at NYU and we're interested at this point interested in um, underlying cognitive issues and how that pertains to your risk of sequelae if you get COVID. So clearly like patients with dementia or, or cognitive, cognitive problems tend to be older. Those folks also, age alone is a predictor of, of poor outcome in many different disease processes, including COVID. Um, so we're going to need a lot more data to try to determine if it's the dementia itself or or age related processes that are are causing people to do worse. But you know our speculation is that since encephalopathy and delirium is so common, that that will be even more prevalent, along with behavioral disturbances in an older population. Um, so that if those patients do contract COVID, they may have more neurological complications or not do as well. Are they predisposed to contracting COVID just by the fact that they have dementia, very hard to say. I would hesitate to say anything like that right now. Um, you know, just, uh, you know, by the fact that, that folks that are doing poorly from COVID um, and or have neurologic complications that are serious usually have um, respiratory manifestations that are relatively profound, and those seem to predominate in terms of dictating um, mortality or um, major functional outcomes. Um, so I think that, uh, you know, the things that predispose folks to having the pulmonary manifestations are probably going to drive risk more so than other, um, other factors. And I know at NYU, they did um, look through, uh, you know, uh, risk factors for hospitalization and they are, you know, they're related to age, they're related to hypoxia, as you might imagine, and they're related to pro-inflammatory markers like CRP and D-dimer. Um, I, I don't know that they looked at all kinds of neurologic baseline issues in terms of predicting who gets hospitalized, i.e. who is sicker with COVID. Um, we're still, I think, trying to parse that out. So we have this global consortium that um, we've organized, and uh, we have about 60 sites participating now. We've developed some common data elements to try to understand patients' um, baseline neurological issues, neurological complications they may develop in the context of a COVID infection, and then how are these folks doing long term. So that is a project that's ongoing, and I think what we'll need to do is um, we're going to need to uh, really get perspective data on these people and look at how they do not just in regards to in hospital mortality or discharge disposition, but longer term outcomes, three months, six months, 12 months, et cetera, functional and cognitive outcomes, mm -hmm. and probably neuropsych outcomes as well, which is, you know, in Italy, I was just listening to NPR uh, on this, like that the, the psychological impact in Italy where they've been sequestered for a longer period of time in quarantine is profound, and they've had a very high death rate per capita. Um, so that's going to be a whole other wave of issues, um, not just amongst uh, COVID survivors, but amongst uh, caregivers as well. So um, I think that's another story that's going to develop.